Hey guys, it's Tearless. Welcome back to the Netherlight Temple. This is the class order hall for priests in World of Warcraft The Legion. I would like to bring you part two of the two video series looking at disciplined priests. In this video, we will be looking at the disciplined priests PvE and PvP talents. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at them. Uh, significant changes here for a disciplined priest in World of Warcraft Legion. First, we're going to start with the PvE talents. Starting over here with number uh, 15 tier, the, the Penitent. Penance may be cast on friendly target, healing them for 151,000 over 1 1.9 seconds. As you guys uh, heard in the first video, Penance no longer heals and instead does damage. It plays more into the playstyle. Honestly, considering how well the new playstyle works, I, I kind of don't like penance um i don't like this talent i like plea better than this so i mean three pleas will get you the same amount as this it will take more time but it will get you the same amount of healing at much less mana cost it'll be like uh i think like maybe twenty five thousand mana cost once it's all said and done because the first one will be 3k this, or the first one will be 4k and then it'll be 8k and then it'll be like 12k or something like that so it ends up being a little bit less uh, at least 25 percent less than what a penance would cost so i don't know uh, how popular that talent is i'm not really a big fan of it next one we have here is castigation which penance fires one additional bolt of holy light over its duration now this one i do like a little bit better because um of how the playstyle is so now you have an extra shot of penance that you can use if you choose so. The last one here is Schism, which you attack the enemy's soul with a surge of shadow energy, dealing 118,000 shadow damage and increasing damage that you deal to the target by 30% for 6 seconds. So let's go ahead and use this here. And you see right there, simple visual, and then I'll do more damage through Penance. So. That was damage through penance normally. Uh, let's go ahead and use penance again. See what I normally deal. 46,000. So that's a pretty significant increase in damage there. So that's your first tier. In the second tier, the third tier, this should look very familiar. Um, Angelic Feather is back. And Body and Soul are back. The only thing that you didn't know is that both of these have had their movement speed reduced from about... 60% down to 40%. So now Angelic Feathers will only give you 40% and Body and Soul will only give you a 40% increase. The new one here is Masochism, which is when you cast Shadow Mend on yourself, its damage over time effect heals you instead. So let me see if I can go ahead and use this right here. I can use Shadow Mend right here and I heal myself and then I'm supposed to start taking damage. I think because I'm in here it doesn't uh, show me taking damage or it may have been bugged but when I have this active now the damage over time effect which is 81,000 will now start healing me instead once again I do not believe that the um, the secondary effect of, of shadow mend is working properly right now but basically what that equates to is instead of 162,000 damage minus 81,000 you instead get 162,000 plus 81,000 when you use it on yourself so Considering the climate of the way things are and how penance now has a baseline, uh, at least through your, it has it through your artifact weapon that you can move quicker when you use penance, uh, it may be better to try out masochism and see, uh, see if you like it better. I don't know. So we have shining force here. Creates a burst of light around a friendly target, knocking back nearby enemies and slowing their movement speed by... 70% for 3 seconds. Um, we'll go ahead and use that here, because uh, I don't have to test the others. You can see the burst there, and it's a knockback, so it's pretty nice. Second here is Psychic Voice. One thing I forgot to mention in the other video is that Psychic uh, Scream is now a uh, baseline for Discipline Priests. Uh, you no longer have to talent into it, it's just straight baseline, so that's a really nice addition to have. However, it is a one minute cooldown, so getting Psychic Voice will return it down to the 30 second cooldown that is standard in Warlords of Drain or Talent Tree. The last talent here is something PvE characters, especially dungeon uh, PvE characters, characters may really like. Um, 
in... I, I just read the article today that uh, World of Warcraft Legion is going to be very dungeon-focused, so this may be pop, uh, popular. It basically turns your Dominate Mind or your, um, your Mind Control spell into an actual CC now. So you may now also control your character while Mind Control is active. And Mind Control now lasts one minute. But it cannot be used against players. Um, there are time, there are s weird situations, I shouldn't say weird, but there are very niche situations, niche situations, however you pronounce it, um, that you can use a mind control in PvP. So if you're a pve -er, this is something you can use, because now you actually have, you know, a form of CC that you can use, you can mind control them, and then you can continue to dish out your damage slash healing as a disciplined priest, which is pretty cool. In the 60 tier, we have welcoming back power word solace. I believe this functions exactly the way it is on live. Um, I do believe, though, that its cooldown has been increased by 2 seconds. So originally it was a 10 second cooldown. Uh, here it's 12 seconds, but it's been reduced a little bit by like 11.1. I honestly don't know where the reductions are coming from. Uh, I've looked at stats and whatnot. I'm not sure where these reductions are coming from. But... Um, that is the, uh, the that is the change for poly, power poly power word soulless in this tree. Otherwise, mind bender is exactly the same. Still the same uh, ability that you have before. Replaces shadow fiend. It's a one minute cooldown. And then you have a new one here called shield discipline. Whenever your power word shield is completely absorbed, you instantly regenerate one percent of your maximum mana. One one percent of your maximum mana is roughly a. Uh, 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 it's 11,000. So out of a shield that costs 22,000, you basically get half of it back. So in the seven tier, uh, in the 75 tier, we have contrition, which increases atonement duration by two seconds. This is actually, I think, going to be kind of popular because uh, of how atonement works. Now we discussed in the last video about how you basically the single buff on atonement. You put it on a character, and it stays there, and it just sticks there. Uh, for I believe it's 15 seconds. That's how long it lasts. Uh, we'll double check here in the in the spell book to see how long uh, atonement lasts. Yes, 15 seconds. So that would change it to se 75 seconds <laughs> to 17 seconds uh, that you can have atonement up and continue to heal someone. What like if I were to go ahead and plop it on our dark cleric here, that allows you to continually heal that character with that atonement or. If you have several dots on it, it'll just continue to heal them over the course of that, which is pretty good. Power Infusion and Twist of Fate are very similar and function exactly the same way they do on live. We have uh, increases your power for 20 seconds, increases haste by 25%, reduces mana cost of all spells by 20%, 2 minute cooldown, and then we have Twist of Fate after healing a target below 35 health. You deal 20% increased damage and 20% increased healing for 10 seconds. That's kind of a big deal, especially since the damage and the healing. You know, increased damage equates into more healing, and then you have a 20% increased healing. Uh, this one's actually really confusing, and I'm wondering how this is going to work, because, um, I, well, because basically you have 20% increased damage and 20% increased healing, so does that affect your atonement healing as well? So you get 20% 20 20 increased damage, which means that now you have a larger pool for that 40 uh, or so, 47% or so, whatever it is, depending on your mastery, to heal, you know, my Dark Cleric Cecile over here. And then on top of that, is that healing increased by 20%? I do not have the answer for you uh, on that. I would have to do some testing on some targets below 35% health, but uh, it's something to look out for when you're actually... Um, going to be testing this uh, when the uh, pre-patch comes out and it's something I'm sure that the uh, the PVE pros will figure out really quickly. In the 90 tier we have the loss of one of my absolute favorite abilities in um, Warlords of in Warlords of Draenor. Um, I'm not quite sure if it's still here as a uh, as a um, dis, uh, excuse me a Holy Priest talent. I'm really hoping it is. If not uh, it will be missed. Uh, instead, Clarity of Will was dropped a tier, and it is now in the 90 tier. It functions the same way. Um, Divine Star, still here, functions the same way. Same thing with Halo, functions the same way. Cascade was removed. It was one of the flashiest spells. I loved it. And 
I really kind of hope it's still in there somewhere, but I'm not quite sure where it would be. In the level 100 tier, we have Grace in the center here. Uh, name coming back, icon and all, increases the non-atonement healing with absorption by 30% on targets w on targets with atonement. So let's break this down. Increases your non-atonement healing. So any healing that's done through damage uh, is not going to be affected by this. And absorption by 30%. Uh, so, okay, it will be affected, sorry. Increases your non-atonement healing. So, if I use plea on a target, it's going to increase the healing from that, but it will not increase any of the healing that is done through damage. So, I didn't get that correct. And then your absorption as well, which will be through your power word shield and your smite. Uh, I, I don't know if the smite uh, absorption is counted as a shield. Uh, it says absorption here, so I'm assuming that the damage absorption that you get from Smite will actually activate uh, as well on you. So, uh, the next 40,000 damage dealt will be absorbed. So, uh, I don't know if that's affected. I doubt it is, but uh, something to look out for. So, we have two really cool abilities here. First, we have Purge the Wicked. Um, 22,000 mana. Cleanses the target with fire, dealing 29,000 fire damage and an additional 134,000 fire damage over 20 seconds, and spreads to additional nearby enemy when you cast Penance on the target. This makes your healing really powerful. Um, I do not know the range on this as far as when it spreads, but let's go ahead and test it. So we have Purge now, and we'll go ahead and use it. It looks like a oh, good old holy fire. We use penance. Okay, it looks like you're going to have to be a lot closer for that to spread. But, I mean, just imagine, you know, you're going to have... You're going to be able to put... Uh, you're going to be able to put atonement on yourself. And if you're able to, all you have to do is press this instant cast and then another instant cast in penance and spread it to all these targets we're talking about a mass amount of incoming healing that you'll be able to provide as a uh, as a disciplined priest if you've got a lot of aoe in the matchup you're able to do a lot of aoe damage by just spreading basically your old power word uh your old uh, shadow word pain to all the targets and then just heal them all over the place which is pretty amazing the third ability here is going to be referred to as shadow covenant it will replace your power and radiance draw upon the draw on the power of the shadow to heal up to five injured allies within 30 yards of the target for 121,000 but leaves a shell on them that absorbs the next 60,000 healing they have they receive for 60 seconds. So let's go ahead and use this here just so we can see what it looks like. And we can go ahead and see it right there. It's not really flashy or anything like that at all. So um, I don't know how much I, I really like this ability. Get this out of here so you can see right here. And that's it. Um, it looks like it may be missing maybe some spell visuals or even some indicators that it's actually on the target. But that is the Shadow Covenant ability. Uh, it possibly may be bugged, I'm not sure. But uh, I would expect there to be more of a visual that it's actually on the target or a debuff indicated or something. But uh, it's kind of a trade-off, you know. No longer will you have the AoE, but at the same time I do believe it will do more for you in terms of straight healing. Uh, burst healing, that is. Because this will heal for only 60,000, but it gives you atonement which then you're able to burst heal. Now imagine if you have Purge the Wicked, and you're able to Purge the Wicked and then have Radiance on the target. I'm going to assume that that's going to do a lot more healing much quicker than Shadow Covenant will be able to do. So uh, that's just my opinion, but I'm, I'm not sure about the exact numbers. Uh, once again, that's something for the Theory Crafters to kind of iron out and... Uh, figure out for you guys I'm bringing you guys the basics of the main changes that are coming to a disciplined priest in World of Warcraft Legion so with that that is everything for the PvE talent tree for a disciplined priest let's go ahead and move into the PvP talent tree now 
before we get into the PvP talent tree, do know that the first two tiers are the standard across all classes. The first tier is standard across every class. The second tier is standard across every type of player. And what I mean by that is you have either ranged DPS, melee DPS, healer, or tank. So that is different depending on which role you play. And then from there, you start getting into the pre-specific talents. Now this works like Call of Duty. You start at level 1. And you can go all the way up to level 50, and then you'll prestige and start at the beginning. And you will gain these talents starting up with Gladi Gladiator's Medallion, excuse me, and going all the way down to Power Word Fortitude, and then going back up to top to Adaptation, moving all the way down, Relentless, all the way down. That's how it's going to function. So, with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at these talents. Oh, do know that if you prestige, you'll lose all of that, and you'll start back at square one, and you'll have to level them all up again. So that when you get to level 50, you'll once again have them all over again. So it'll be kind of your decision whether you want to prestige or you just want to leave it as is. So, with that being said, let's look at the first one. First is Gladiator's Medallion. When you first PvP for the first time, you'll get an Honorable Medallion. And that is a 3-minute cooldown of PvP Trinket. This will replace it with a 2-minute one. That's basically saying, okay, I'm going to replace the, uh, the standard uh, Heirloom Trinket with an actual PvP Trinket. Uh, that's what Gladiator's Medallion is. Adaptation, this is, uh, I really like this one on DPS, it's not really my favorite for healers. Uh, all loss of control effects with a duration of 5 seconds or more will activate your Honorable Medallion spell, but only causes it to incur a 60 second cooldown. So that basically gives you a 60 second cooldown on your Honorable Medallion, but uh, you no longer have control over it. Now you can still activate an Honorable uh, Medallion, but uh, then it activates the three minute cooldown instead. So you'll no longer be able to have adaptation until that three minutes comes up. The last here is Relentless. I really only see tanks taking this. It replaces your honorable medallion and that's the big kind of gut wrenching problem with it. And the duration of incoming crowd control effects by 25, it reduces the incoming crowd control effects by 25%. I honestly, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they changed it so that this didn't replace Honorable Medallion. Maybe I'm undervaluing 25% reduction on uh, duration of incoming crowd control effects, um, but the, I just I just don't see anyone taking it other than a tank. In this next tier, this is the healing tier, we have after, a Defender of the Week. After healing a target below 50% health, you gain 20% haste for 5 seconds. In the second one, we have Vim and Vigor. While, you're, while you are at or above 80% health, your healing is increased by 20%. And then lastly, we have Inner Renewal. Casting effective heals on yourself directly will refund 50% of the spell's mana cost. Uh, that's for mana consumption, dealing with mana consumption in PvP, which I really don't think is too, uh, too dire of a problem in PvP as compared to PvE. Now we start getting into the Priest Talents. We have Purification. Purify now has a maximum of two charges, so you now have two charges on Purify. Right now it only has one. In the second, we have a Spiritual Cleansing. Purify no longer has a cooldown, but only dispels one magic and disease effect. Uh, right now baseline, it will re remove all magic and disease effects. Um, I think it really kind of depends on the character you're facing. There's some characters out there that are able to put up billions of dots on you. Um, maybe you might want to deal with it, maybe you may not. Depends. So it's going to be kind of a flavor thing. Purified Resolve, removing harmful effects with Purify will apply a Purified Resolve to the target, granting an Absorption Shield equal to 8% of your maximum of their maximum health. Last 8 seconds. So this is the Purify tier. Um, you basically pick your poison on which uh, uh, which type of uh, purify that you want to have. Honestly, uh, let's be blunt here, pretty boring tier. As you see here, your fourth tier here, we have Searing Light. When you deal damage with Smite, the cooldown on your penance is reduced by one second. It increases the damage done by your penance by 30%. That's pretty cool. Um, you're going to be doing smite a lot as a disciplined priest in PvP because you're going to be healing through atonement. You have premonition. It's instant 12 second cooldown heals nearby targets within 20 yards for 21,000 and applies atonement to yourself. Deals 40,000 shadow damage to yourself for each atonement you have active. So let's say you were to pop 
power word radiance. And then you were used premonition. It would deal 40,000 shadow damage to yourself for each atonement damage. So you would literally be doing about, what, 120,000 damage to yourself depending on how much uh, atonement has. They're really making you, as a disciplined priest, pay attention to how many stacks of atonement you have out there, because there are abilities that are really going to start hurting if you have a lot of atonement stacks out there. So you have to be careful and pay attention to your atonement stacks at all times. Uh, I would not be surprised to see a, a much better indicator add-on that someone makes to help people track who has atonement. There's Psalm Prayers, uh, reduces the duration of incoming silence and interrupt effects by 25%. Uh, that can be pretty big. Um, somewhat similar to Relentless. I don't know if they stack or whatnot. Um, crowd control effects generally don't apply to silence and interrupt effects, I don't believe, but I could be wrong about that. Um, it's been a while since I did any type of uh, healer or uh, I should say uh, casting DPS in PvP. I have my hunter and then a lot of melee classes so it's been a while since I was playing a caster in PvP. I think the last time was a mage and it was a really long time ago. In this fifth tier we have strength of soul. Your power word shield reduces all physical damage taken by 30% while the shield persists. Pretty strong uh, if I do say so myself. We have Renewed Help, your Power Word Shield and Power Word Barrier also heals targets afflicted, affected for 42,000. And then lastly, we have Dome of Light. Power Word Barrier reduces the damage taken by an additional 25%, and the cooldown of your Power Word Barrier is reduced by 60 seconds. This could be very useful. The only problem I have with it is that um, Power Word Barrier, once again, is a location-based spell, so you must... Eh, I hate, one thing I hate, and maybe this is just me coming as a hunter and the other mobility-esque classes that I like playing, uh, I don't like being in one place at the same time, like just sticking to one place, so maybe this bothers me more than at others, however I do have a Dispreach friend that uh, uses Power Barrier a lot, and he saves me a lot with Power Barrier, so... Um, <laughs> It's, de it's definitely something to look forward to, uh, this entire tier, looking at Power Word Shield and Power Word Barrier. This Strength of Soul, personally, being my favorite, um, because I do believe with uh, how Disciplined Priests are healing in this expansion, that melee is going to be more of a problem from them, possibly, than they have been before. So, in this tier, we have Power Word Fortitude, uh, increases the target with Vitality. Uh, it fuses the target with vitality, increases the maximum health by 15% for one hour, maximum two targets. So, um, this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool for you, like, you and a friend. Um, basically, you just uh, stick this on two targets, arenas, arena twos, probably definitely taking this. Uh, power word forward to basically, though. Coming back, different. It's no longer just a raid-wide buff. It's just two players um, that you can put on you and another player. Uh, personally, I'm glad raid white buffs are gone. I hated reviving from a graveyard in a BG and then like stacking my buffs up again. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I definitely had a lot of characters and PvP with a lot of characters in which I didn't have to worry about buffing myself. <laughs> There's Archangel making its return in the PvP talent here. Refreshes the duration of your atonement on all allies when cast. Increases your healing and absorption effects by 30% for 15 seconds. So timing this if, like at an opportune time, I mean, let's just say that you are able to get, um, let's say you're able to get nine, uh, nine players with atonement, okay? Um, no, that's a little bit much. Let's say you're able to get uh, six players with atonement, okay? You have six stacks of atonement up. They're getting close, like, uh, one of them's getting really close to 15 seconds, the others are about 9 seconds. You're able to hit this, and it refreshes the duration on Atonement for all of them. You can put Atonement on more players, and then on top of that you have talents like Purge the Wicked, and then use Penance, and then you're just mass healing everyone. I like this talent. Um, if I am a Disc Priest, this is something I'm definitely looking for 
in a rated battleground setting anything in which you have more targets than uh, one or two the last one here is dark archangel increases your damage and the damage of all allies with your atonement by 15 percent for eight seconds so both archangels are dealing with your atonement and the new changes to atonement this is basically a damage boost for everyone with atonement so if you're able to spread uh, your atonement pretty far. Um, I'm not quite sure whether this drops off with atonement or it's just eight seconds no matter what. If it's eight seconds no matter what, you could possibly get uh, atonement on something up to like six, tar uh, probably up to 12 targets, something along those lines. Uh, 10 targets, you could so easily in a rated battleground, you can get this across to all of your targets and then give them a 15% damage buff and it's only on a one minute cooldown. Uh, so you can definitely see uh, possibly Disc Priest being a very offensive healer. You know, you, maybe if you're in a, a rated battleground with two healers, um, maybe three, but two healers, um, I would expect the Disc Priest to be more on the offensive side of things than the defensive side of things. I could be wrong about that, but uh, it, it's definitely something that I, I could see happening in the PvP world. So, with that, there is everything for Discipline Priests in World of Warcraft Legion. I hope you guys enjoyed this. There's a lot going on with Discipline Priests, uh, a lot of changes. And I think, finally, they've got it right. They've got it fixed into a position in which you actually have a class that is going to be able to DPS and you know punch out the healing at the same time. I do not think this spec will be ignored. I think it will be used. And so um, I, I definitely hope to see a lot of people out there testing this. So that's everything for the Dis Discipline Priest. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Till us out.